So um, now I'd just like to hand over to Brooke, who's, uh, as I said earlier, a stalwart of the Stop It Dani movement. Uh, she's been involved with Mackay Conservation Group for much longer than Adani has been a thing that we've all known about uh, and has, you know, but is really passionate about taking, you know, doing the work to stop Adani, which is what we really want to see happen. Brooke. Yeah, you might need a prop or something. I can, yeah, the camera's over. Okay. There. Oh, so I okay, can good. So I don't look at the screen. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Brooke. Um, Peter gave me a lovely introduction. Now, I'm here this evening to give you an update on what's happening with the Donnie. Now, um, I will like to start by saying <clears throat> that for over 10 years, People like us have kept the coal in the ground. On the other hand, I don't want to sugarcoat what's happening. Um, we need to know the true facts and so we can rally and we know where and how to fight. Okay, so um, first of all, I was for an update. I'll talk about the insurance. From what we know, the existing insurance policies Adani has with Lloyd's expire in November. And we hope to hear at that point that Lloyd's has listened to our demands and Adani no longer has access for their destructive project through the Lloyd's marketplace. Um, now that, that information came to me um, and I did have to wonder if I, I believe that Lloyd's is a conglomeration of many, many insurance companies and that we have to pick them off one at a time instead of just Lloyd's making a blanket ruling that no, none of their companies are allowed to insure coal projects. I don't know. Anyway, all my... Um, why they need the insurance, why we it's important to try to stop the insurance. All major projects require underwriting insurance for public liability, plant and equipment damage, and workers' compensation, among other things. It is very likely that Adani still hasn't locked in the major insurance deals that it needs to construct the, to construct the mine and rail line. And without insurance, it cannot undertake the work. So far, we have convinced over 35 global insurers, including some major players in the resources and energy sectors, to publicly rule out insuring any part of the Adani Carmichael project. So, yay us. <laughs> um, Finance, we've launched, we've launched a campaign targeting Adani Group's five biggest investors. Over 40 banks have ruled out lending to the Adani Carmichael project. Yay us. Despite admitting the project, despite admitting that the project will be financed by the Adani Group, the conglomerate is still looking for funds to build the coal mine and rail line. So they're saying they're gonna pay for it themselves, but they're still looking for money. So we've got to do something to try to prevent them from finding that money. On the groundwork, they are progressing every day. They have reached first coal and are making a lot of progress on their rail line. Um, I have been out and seen it and was, yeah, a little bit alarmed <laughs> at um, how much had gone on. Okay, um, now, as far as the construction goes, Adani can't build its coal mine and rail line by itself. It needs specialized companies to help it, including engineering design firms and construction contractors. We are tracking the companies that are currently helping Adani. Um, 
uh, <laughs> sorry, that are currently helping Adani to trash First Nations land rights, drain critical water resources from drought-stricken regions, risk our already distressed Great Barrier Reef, and fuel runaway global warming that threatens all our lives and livelihoods. And for coal haulage, there are only three companies in Australia that are equipped to haul Adani's coal, and Adani didn't reach a haulage contract agreement with any of them. Adani has been forced to set up its own coal haulage company owned by Adani Ports. So Adani Ports investors and bankers are now um, perhaps at risk of funding the Carmichael Coal Project, putting money into a project that they have already put some money into and you know don't want to lose overnight. Now, something else that came across my desk today um, was from the, the Guardian. And apparently there's been an alarming drop in aquifer levels near the Adani mine. And that has sparked concerns for the sacred wetlands. The Dumabula Springs near Adani's Carmichael coal mine site are a sacred site for the Wangan and Jagalingu people. Aquifer levels have dropped significantly near the Adani Carmichael coal mine since 2019 prompting concern from groundwater experts that the vol large volumes of water being pumped may have already locked in irreversible damage to sensitive wetlands. Groundwater monitoring data, data from one aquifer in the southwest corner of the mining lease shows a drawdown of about 50 meters in the past two years. That sounds alarming, but unfortunately, I don't have any frame of reference to tell you what, how serious, but 50 meters from a well sounds like a lot to me. Um, okay, my, sorry, my printer was running out of ink. <laughs> <here. laughs> um, so I did go over this. Um, let's see, uh, as, um, as the Donnie begins extracting coal from the Carmichael coal mine in Queensland, water issues loom as the last ditch hurdles. Um, Guardian, the Guardian Australia has revealed um, last month that the company, oh, what was it? it Anyway, the company says they've got their own water source, but they're not letting us know what it is because it is commercial incompetence. And the Queensland government refuses to look into Adani's undisclosed water source. So what one thing you can do about that, I don't know if this also crossed other people's um, desks this morning, but there is going to be a um, Wangan wagon and Jagalingo um, legal, um, they're, they're doing legal action right now, but there's going to be a Zoom um, like demonstration on the 30th of August online. So anybody who has not got the invitation to participate in this, contact Peter, contact the conservation group, and he can send you this. This is, um, this will be at least Queensland wide. I'm not sure, maybe even bigger than that. But the more people who can become involved on um, I believe the 30th is a Monday evening from 6 to 7.45. Yeah, um, you can get involved with this Zoom link because the Wagon, at, Wagon and Jagalingu people have gone before the Queensland courts to demand a stop work by Adani, from Adani um, until this water issue is clarified. Um, 
So what else we can do? So anyway, I just wanted to say that, yeah, there's some urgent things happening out there. We have to keep involved. Um, there will be, um, Peter and I will be hosting a, um, a digital storm, an hour of power next week, next Wednesday. Um, if people want to come in and we will spend an hour just ramming emails, phone calls, um, calendar jams, whatever is your thing against the State Bank of India, begging them not to finance the Adani Carmichael mine. Um, so what can we do? I've just said some of the things, but we can also, everybody out there, put on your thinking cap. Think of something. Think of something and let people know. Okay, are there any questions? Sorry, the, um, the rally? Um, the rally or our, our the environment center? Our meeting. It's next Wednesday from 5.30 to 6.30. If you come, bring your phone, laptop, um, handheld device, you know, whatever, because um, it will be an online um, attack um, or approach, I'm sorry, <laughs> approach to the State Bank of India. And you can do it online as well, but you could be, you can, you can just do the work online. Yeah, 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 you can. Um, yeah. I have some information that I've printed out and um, I also have something I could, an email um, that I could forward to people if they wanted, didn't want to do anything by hand, but yeah. Okay, anything, any other questions? Brooke, it's Patricia here. Um, I would think that the federal government would want to know what this un, um, unknown water source, what that is. And also, I think they'd also want to know about the 50 metre drawdown if they don't know already. So someone should be approaching the federal government to seek some clarification on that, I would think. Okay, do you know how we would do that? I'll, I'll look into it, love. Um, that'd be great, that'd be great. And then just disseminate the information. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that could spark new ideas of, of movements, actions we could actually get involved in. Thanks, Patricia. Sure. One, one thing for all of you, please. Uh, back about 1976, Malcolm Fraser canceled the active license to put an end to all of the sand mining on Fraser Island. Now, that had previously been approved on various grounds, but it did not stack up environmentally. I think you may have uh, some avenues and looking at the uh, parallel situation with this environmental damage. Yeah, well, it has been pointed out um, to me several times that um, a number of projects that were stopped in, here in Australia were stopped like mid-sentence. They'd already begun and then they were shut down. So just because Adani is there and building that damn railroad doesn't mean it ca he can't be stopped. <laughs> 